Readings YouTube. Time for a bargain video. Here we have a graphic novel of Hercules, and you'll notice that there's two of them. Because when I bought this, they came shrink wrapped together, and I paid a dollar for two copies, so I'm going to end up donating both these copies when I'm done. I'll probably donate one copy before I even start to read the other one, because I just don't need two copies. <laughs> Uh, the Book of Lost Tales by J.R.R. Tolkien. I got that from my wife. Um, Spooky, New England. Tales of hauntings, strange happenings, and other local lore. I got that from my wife, both because she's interested in the topic and because it has some really lovely woodcut drawings. Alpine Zone of the Presidential Range. Um, this is about the flora and fauna that you can find in the Alpine Zone of the Presidential Range here in New England. Um, my wife is interested in hiking the uh, presidential range, so I thought that might be of interest to her. We have uh, Time Lord, which is about Sir Sanford Fleming and the creation of Standard Time, and I got this both because it is an interesting topic in my opinion, and the estate sale I bought it from, this was in the bedroom of the person that had died, and this is they their marked page shows where they stopped reading it, which I thought was somewhat poetic setting it's a book about time. Um, enslaved by ducks. One man went from head of the household to bottom of the pecking order, um, which is I, he I heard was supposed to be relatively humorous. And uh, I, my wife has actually entertained the idea of keeping chickens. So there you go. Then we have E equals MC, MC, MC squared, a biography of the world's most famous equation. So this is about the equation itself as opposed, well, tangently, of course, related to Einstein, but about the, the, the equation itself, which looked like it could be interesting. Um, also, it's a very strange size. It's longer and thinner than your average um, paperback. And we have some DVDs. We have Cyborg 009, a series I'd never heard of before, but I thought I'd give it a look. Then we have Blue Gender the Warrior, a film I've never heard of either, either. Um, but the idea of alien... Uh, invasion is always and it can be intriguing. Then we have Neon Genesis uh, Evangelion, um, the death and rebirth. Then we have Shiri, which is an Asian action film. Star Trek Generations, which we watched last night uh, with commentary, and these writers had no idea what they were doing, and frankly, it isn't a very good movie. But it was sealed when I bought it, so whoever owned it before me didn't think it was very good either. Then we have Godzilla Attacks. Um, All Monsters Attack. This is from the Toho Master Collection. Highly recommended. The commentary track on this is awesome. My wife recommends you be drinking. Um, Dazed and Confused, a film I've never seen. A Goodbye Lover, kind of a film noir thing. I've never seen that either. Uh, Cricket on the Hearth, an animated kids film I've never seen, done in the same style as the Rankin and Bash, uh, Basque um, stuff, so that could be interesting. Deep Impact, which I got just for the commentary track. Wonder Boys um, with uh, Michael Douglas and Tobey Maguire, um, which I've never seen. Uh, and we have uh, a Billy Connolly movie, um, Prince Charming, which I discovered I can't play. This should have been a hint where it says Euro on the cover. It won't work on my DVD player, or rather my Blu-ray player. So I'm going to probably send that to a friend of mine in Europe. Um, and then we have Night at the Golden Eagle, which is actually... A, pre, a screening copy. Yeah, screening copy. Um, and it's a James Conn film I've never heard of. And uh, kind of intriguing. I never owned a screening copy of something before. Um, so I thought I'd give that a, a look too. On to section two after I change my battery. First thing we have is a wool sweater with a sheep on it wearing a wool sweater. This is from Woolrich. I picked this up at an estate sale for my wife for um, a buck. It was an ugly sweater, right? I keep playing humor. And um, then we have this hanger, which is designed to stack up five pair of pants. I want to actually organize my pants a little better. So I figured I'd give this a shot and it's three bucks. Um, then we have this. And this is stoneware, which has been um, really well sculpted and glazed. The person that did this was really talented, but I can find no real markings on this thing, which amazes me, because the person really 
is quite challenging. Now, unfortunately, the tray he's holding is busted. Um, I wish I wish I had been able to fix it myself. I could have done a better job. But I'm not going to monkey with it now. Um, and I don't know where to put this guy. He's like a Buddha bear. And I had to own him by myself. And I'm like, this is too awesome. I find him aesthetically pleasing, and I like to assemble with him. Then we have a moose mug. I just I bought, got this for my wife. I gave it to her favorite cafe and donated it to their moose team. And we have a mirror, which is a bending little stand so it can go right or a 45 degree angle. Um, and I got that as a piece of gear, actually, so that I could put it in places and reflect light if I need to. Um, someone had mentioned that online as, an, as something that they had done successfully in the past. So I'm like, I can give that a try. And for a buck, small buy-in. Um, then we have this, which is a silver plated uh, cake server, and I'm, I don't eat cake, but I found this thing aesthetically pleasing, and I saw it hanging in a particular antique shop I visit on a regular basis, or once a month or so, and it was there like four times, and I'm like, okay, I gotta own this. Um, so I'll put it hanging on my wall, which I just really like. It also has a really nice weight to it. Um, then we have a tube, T-O-O-B, of deep sea creatures that will be reviewed coming up on that. And we have a um, Kyocera ceramic knife, which I picked up for six bucks. The tip, the very, very tiny tip is, is gone. The rest of the edge is in excellent condition. And I like that particular size um, and shape of the knife for, for cutting. And uh, I had not tried this before, but I have a four, so I thought it would be a good shot. Um, then we have this magnificent chicken cast iron bell with this wonderful sun wheel. It has no clapper, but it makes a nice sound. Um, well, I guess one of the advantages of wearing a tungsten wedding ring is that if I need to ring a bell, it's really easy to ring a bell. <laughs> just tap it with my ring. Um, and uh, so I need to put a clapper in it. But it was six bucks at a buy the pound place, so it weighs well, it was six dollars and forty four cents. So it weighs a little more than uh, six pounds because they charge ninety nine cents a pound for hard goods, and this is definitely a hard good. So this is just awesome. I haven't figured out where he's going to go yet, but he is very attractive. On to gear. And here we have some gear. We have a Coleman Divide flashlight. Uh, this is a 160 lumen model. This is supposed to have a feature that, uh, that disconnects the batteries to prevent drain. I've never used one. I picked it up for 9 bucks at Walmart. Um, I'll give it a try and see if I like it or not. Um, here we have a Craftsman um, two double A battery light, and this is kind of a ubiquitous size. So I was going to compare it to like you know like your mag lights or or a number of other companies that have this style. What's interesting when I purchased this one is that there were two models with the same model number, but one was about uh, three quarters of an inch shorter, had two double A's, had a different lens. But the run times were different. The ones that had the shorter body was advertising a three hour run time, and this is advertising a 25 hour run time. Now the two three hour run times they had hanging on the, on the rack were in front of these two. So I'm thinking they were trying to get rid of some older models before they went up to this one. But I bought this one because they were all on sale for the same price for like 12 bucks. So I bought one um, just so I can make a comparison to other ones. Uh, but it was kind of interesting to uh, uh, to see that they had the same part number, but they were significantly different. They had a different lens, a different length, and a different runtime. I'd be intrigued to find out why. Um, else, we all have a Brookstone crank light, which is horrible. I'll be getting rid of that. <laughs> then we have a kid's roller skate, roller uh, rather, skateboard rather, which I purchased oddly enough as a bench to sit on the floor when I'm working on my laptop on my on my stand. And initially it was all right, but it puts my leg at a weird angle. It actually makes it uncomfortable. So I'm probably going to keep that. Maybe I can use it as a as a dolly or um, maybe as a camera mount or some variety. Uh, I didn't pay a lot for it, so you know I might find a use for it. Yeah, I know it's kind of weird to think of that as a bench, but I needed something that when I sat in the floor that got me up a little off the floor, and this just isn't the right angle. So I'll keep looking for something else. Um, then we have an actual telescope here, and what was intriguing to me about this, this has actually got proper optics in it. This was made in Rochester, New York. It's not antique 
from the construction method, I might say it was vintage. So something maybe out of the 60s. Um, but it's got a really nice weight to it. I need to do some, do some research about it. But it has an 8 power, it's 8 power and it works well. Um, and there's something about using a telescope like this just, just makes me smile, makes me think of pirates and things like that. Um, so that made that was that was kind of cool, and it was cost me a buck at a at a thr at a thrift shop because I don't think they realized it had true optics in it. Um, and we have a pen slash stylus, whoop, which I apparently whoop, have upside down, which my father gave me for some strange reason, <laughs> but I got it for nothing, so I give it a try, see if it works. And um, then we have two Jorgensen wooden clamps. I've never owned clamps like this before. Now I picked up these two clamps at an estate sale for 10 bucks. So that was a short buy-in to see if I like this design. I've never used one, um, but there is something wonderfully warm about wood. So that's kind of cool. Then we have a knife here, which is, it's a Chinese knife, and I kind of like the the shape of the blade and the handle is kind of interesting. So you'll be seeing a larger review for that. <laughs> and here we have two Jokari racket ball paddles. This is a kind of a, it's a French racquetball game, um, but I have already converted them into weapons. <laughs> so they didn't even make it into the video before I decided, you know, screw it. I'm just going to make a convert and make my, make, make my, uh, my weapons out of these things. And I will, uh, um, post this before, before I post the crafting video. So there's a little preview of what they look like. <laughs> there you go. Um, cause you know, everybody needs, uh, racquetball paddles that have saw blades on them. <laughs> 